Welcome to Bit by the Numbers. This is FM Tahiti. I hope you're all doing well. Thanks for joining me. In this episode, we're going to play our very first competitive match. But before we do that, we've got a few things to cover. So first of all, who have we signed? Second of all, have we done all right in the friendly so far? And third of all, we need to set up some set pieces, which I'm going to show you how I'm going to set them up. They might be terrible set pieces. I've not. I've left them as the defaults until now, whilst I've been trying to get the other tactics uh, ready. And uh, then we'll play the, the first match. So if we go and look at our transfers, transfer history here, you see we've brought quite a few players in. That's quite a lot uh, to bring in, mainly all freeze, apart from one desperation loan uh, that I brought in. I'm kind of regretting uh, now. And if you look at our finances and our wage budget, we've got a wage budget of £514 and we're spending £496 uh, per week. And so we've got a little bit of money to spare. £18 uh, per week uh, to spare, which probably isn't even enough for pizza for the entire squad. So the uh, Ranieri Gambit won't work for this one. We can't use that as a motivator. If you look at the squad itself, I'll go through most of the players, but I'll do it relatively quickly. So we managed to sort out the keeper situation. Um, we brought Darren Gibbons in, who looks okay. Um, previously... Played some sort of banger from Glen Torren, played for Lan. He's got a bit of experience. He seems all right. We've also got an under 19s um, keeper now called Jared O'Kane, who's rated as being potentially quite good in the future. And by quite good, I mean he could play at this level in the future. Um, let's not get ahead of ourselves, really. We've got um, Jamil Awayeho. He doesn't look like he's actually up to much, uh, but he plays quite well. And the alternative player, I had someone else I'd sort of signed for this same role and I've released them because they wanted £220 per appearance and Jamil wants £45 and they played more or less the same in terms of how they played. The other guy was a bit more solid, he could play in a few other positions, he had a bit of backup, but I couldn't really afford £220 per appearance for one player, especially when he was going to be playing most matches. Stephen Chambers and Kurt Cooper all were already here. Uh, Paul Coulter was already here. We've got Connor McCall, who seems pretty good, six foot three. Uh, Derek Murphy was already here. We've got Ben Mitchell, one of you Coronation Street fans. Uh, not Coronation Street, what am I talking about? EastEnders. Uh, he looks all right. He's been. We tried him out on, on trial, and again, it's one of those ones where he wants something like what is he on? He gets paid fifty pounds per appearance. The player we were going to sign instead of him wanted one hundred and ninety. We thought. Well, I say we thought. I thought. We need to save a little bit of money here and there, especially because it's one of the uh, club sort of vision promises style things and that we've got to keep within our budget. So made a few changes there. Got Matthew Mullahund playing at left back. He's really our only left back option uh, as it stands. What I'm planning on doing is there is someone at left back I'm trying to bring in. If I bring him in, I'm going to get rid of Kurt or Steven and hopefully that will free up enough for me to be able to afford him. Uh, Ryan Smith was already here. Um, we could lose him happily. Matthew Hines we brought in. He's been playing fairly solidly in a kind of ball winning midfielder role, which I brought back in rather than a central midfielder. Uh, Higginson we brought in on loan from Ards. I couldn't really see any of his attributes when I brought him in on loan. I just knew I needed to get some bodies in. Um, so I might get him to return at some point if I can. Chris Hansen we already had on the left. He's okay, but again, you know, if we lost him, it would be a big deal. Ryan Lamb we brought in. He's tiny. He looks like a child on the pitch. He's five foot three, uh, but he played quite well. We did have um, a better option on the right, um, but another club came in. Warren Point in the Premier League, or the you know Northern Irish Premier League, came in and poached him off as we put an offer in. They put in better. And they took him. So we've got Ryan Lamb instead, down as a breakthrough prospect. But I think he'll be rotating on the right, along with Noel McManus, 17-year-old. He looks just as good. He's a bit taller. Um, he's been playing reasonably well in the friendlies, too. Bit of a mercenary. Uh, Mark Mitchell to cover in the middle, probably in the box-to-box -box role. And again, fairly professional, been playing quite well. And he fits in quite well. He's got good passing, good teamwork, good leadership. Good decisions. Reasonable player. Uh, Lynch was already with us. He's been playing in the box-to-box -box role for the most part, even though he's more of a winger. Um, 
but he gives us cover on the left if we need. So we could lose Hansen as long as we can keep hold of him. I think there's a, he's wanted by Port Stewart. Darren Stewart was our captain. He's already here. I think, what does he want? What's he on? £140 per appearance. Someone's already come in for him, Ballyclare. I kind of hope they get him because we've got enough cover on the left still. We've got enough cover up front. I don't want to pay him £140 per appearance. Uh, Warwick is our key man, or he was when we arrived. He's been doing pretty well on the left. And then we've got our striker. So we've got Jordan Arbuthnot. Um, he looks okay, pace acceleration-wise, good off the ball. Reasonable first touch, finishing the eight is okay. Uh, but actually, he plays really well in the match engine. You, hopefully, you'll see in the next match. He drifts into position quite nicely as a pressing forward. So a lot of through balls find him because of the way he moves off the ball. You can really see it in the match engine that he's doing the job. Tate was already there. He looks like he could be good off the bench. He's meant to be down as a regular starter. I don't think I'm going to be doing that, but that's what he was told before I arrived. TJ Hughes, um, not to be confused with the shop. Uh, good finishing, good heading, good pace, acceleration and agility. Because he's got good heading, he's going to be our target man. In theory, he's the best player we've got in the air up front. And then we've got Stephen Duff, 16 years old. He was on a free he is a product, was it Crusaders? Yeah. Crusader, Crusaders produced him, released him. We've signed him up. And he's done really well with his attributes. Good dribbling, finishing, first touch. Good technique. Good acceleration and fitness and flair and off the ball and aggression, which we like. I don't know how good he's going to be in the long run. But he's going to pound a week. Um, which makes him quite well paid. What's he on there? He's getting a pound a week because he's in a youth contract. The moment he's not in a youth contract, that pound gets taken away from him. We give him something like £20 every time he plays. Um, so there we go. That's the squad. And to see how they've been doing, I mean, we've got a bit of leeway. We need another left back in. So we might lose someone else on the left up front or might lose Ryan Smith to make room for some extra. And we've not got many. We've got Jared O'Kane, who is the kind of backup keeper. No one else there so the dev center is only focused on jared o'kane currently uh, if we look at how we've done beat the malachians 5-1 uh sam rob was the player that got poached away from us he's worth a bit of money now at warren point beat dunmurray wreck 2-0 beat east kilbride 2-1 which is a bit of a surprise but we played a good match against them and they're in the lower leagues in scotland but they're in the one just below the the active was it Division 2 in Scotland that we've got. So quite often they get promoted into that. They're quite a strong team for a, a non-league team. Then there was this surprise. So I played these three matches. I didn't holiday them. I played them because I was tweaking the tactic. I wanted to see what the players looked like because I didn't actually get an assistant manager until after the Dunmurray Rec game. So I didn't have any coaching staff who would let me see what the new players on trial looked like attribute-wise. So I had to play the matches and watch them and see. And their attributes gradually got filled in. Uh, so the Newcastle and the 23s match, I let my assistant take over. So the assistant I approached in the other video, and we smashed them 7-2. And I don't know if these are real players. Well, they are in terms of they're not grayed out players, but they're not, you know. They're mainly grayed out. I mean, the first team's not, but okay, so maybe it wasn't that strong a team then. But 7 2 is still pretty good. And now we've got Distillery, Lisbon Distillery in the Bet McLean Cup first round. So the Bet McLean Cup first round, if we look at this, it's one of the ones they want us to be competitive in. It's one of the ones they, this and the Northern Irish Cup are the ones they care about. They don't care about these two here in the middle. So we're going to play Distillery. They are in the same league as us, uh, but I think they're predicted to come third. They're two to one to get promoted. We're down here predicted tenth, so we're expected to do better than Anag and their Banbridge. I, I know I'm not saying that right, but I can't help Anna. Um, so you know. We're not expected to get relegated based on the changes we've made, but Lisbon are much higher than us, and historically, Lisbon have 
within memory they've been in Premier League. This is a massive fall from grace for them, but a team that should beat us. We're playing at home, we sell 209 tickets. That should be alright, that should get some money in. But what we're going to do before this is just move over to the tactics and look at the set pieces. In terms of the actual tactic itself, I've just saved it. It's pretty much the same as it was before. The only thing I've changed is this ball winning midfielder, I think. I think it was a central midfielder support. I just swapped it to a ball winning midfielder because it, it just felt a bit easier to get that kind of natural versus unconvincing. I don't think it makes much difference. So set pieces. We're not going to worry too much about the takers. I want that to kind of rotate randomly at the moment. But we want to make the most of set pieces. So I'm going to look at the attacking ones first. And so I'm not going to set up the defending ones until I'm a bit more used to the match engine. And this is because in FM19, if you put, say, a player on the post when you were defending a set piece, more often than not, they did nothing. The ball would be fired at them and either they wouldn't get in the way or they would get in the way and it would go in. I very rarely saw them actually stop it and be useful. So I changed it, but I don't know if it's like that yet. I've not seen enough. But what I am going to do is change the attacking ones. And for me, a big thing is the sort of throw-ins. I love a long throw. So if you go over to the right-hand side here, player instruction, long. Get that into the box. What I'll probably have is right midfield coming short. What I really want is the... That's what's so on the right. I want the right uh, until I know who's you know got a better throwing um, technique. I want this set up here, right full back, pass it through midfield. So there, if it goes wrong, at least they're on the right side of the pitch. And then what I kind of want here is my striker, who's going to be my yep yeah, TJ Hughes. He's the target man. He's going to be here, ready to flick on. And I want some of them. To attack. Can he attack from the edge as well? Let's get him in the box. Get the other central midfielder. So this other central midfielder. Can he attack from the edge? He's going to lurk outside. Then we're going to have the pressing forward attack the far post. You've got Mark the keeper the same as challenge the keeper? Yeah, I think so. Actually, let's swap these two around. Let's have him lurk on the edge of the area and just the other one get forward there. If I'm feeling brief, if this doesn't work as, as intended, I'll probably bring this other <laughs> centre back up front to so sort of load it into the box. In fact, I'm going to change my mind right now, right now also doing it. Instead of lurking on the edge of the area, let's get him there. So you get lots on the far post, the marking the keeper, with the idea being this will flick on and hopefully do something. So that's what we're going to call, um, let's call it Mick Delap Proud. Right. We go to the left, we want to pretty much set it the same way. Go along. One's this. Even Duff, let's swap these ones around. Let's just have tack the ball from the edge. Defender mark the keeper. And again, we've kind of set up this kind of flick on. So either the target man's going to make his own chance or he's going to try and create something for someone else here or someone running in. That's the plan. Um, in terms of the other attacking pieces, actually, no, let's go back to, let's actually save this left hand side one. Save routine. I'll just put left, left on there. So you've got that now. And then the other set piece, corners, tacking, kind of want the same. So mixed. Oh, I just want it in the six. We'll go from the right, we'll tell them to put it in a six yard box. And then what we want 
two strikers to be attacking the near and far post. We want a defender to be marking the keeper. And then the fullbacks back to defend. It's on the edge of the area. That'll do for us. Let's save all routines. That's so that you can save the collection. You probably do that right at the end. But let's call this one uh, just corner right six yard. And if we go to the left, I want to tell them to go to the far post so we can knock it back across to cause a bit of confusion. Defending's not going to be great at this level. Let's cause some confusion. So it's going to go to the, uh, the far post. Um, TJ Hughes, our target man. And then basically just have all of these ones lined up. And I think this, this is the plan. Don't want anyone in here. I want this one to be able to knock it back. Let's say... Post. Let's save that and let's crack on with the match. I realise this recording is going on a while now, but you know it's our first competitive fixture. Uh, what we'll do here as well is on the quick pick, I'm going to tell it to clear all the subs because we won't have that many subs to make, um, and we can make a few key changes here and there. So Lamb's going to start. Sean McManus is on the bench. Mitchell on the bench as well. Arth not I can never say I'm not gonna be able to use name. Arb Buthnot. Arb Buthnot. That'll do. Mitchell as well. Ooh. Stick him in there. Um someone for the right. Let's put on Cooper. So we got Ren Stewart for the moment. So there we go. So we've got Mullahan at left. Derek Murphy currently taking centre, but I mentioned eventually Ben Mitchell will replace him. Connor McCall and our Yeho. Then we've got Warwick on the left. Lynch box to box with Mitchell coming on for him, the Mark Mitchell. Hines taking on the ball winner. Lamb, Tiny Lamb on the right. And then we've got Duff, it's pressing forward, and Hughes as our target man. So the plan is get it forward, get Hughes knocking it down, get Duff running onto three balls, and just tackle them really hard and hurt them. So we've had a good preseason. We've still got a few preseason friendlies after this. So it's an early round that we're playing. Um, so it's it's entirely possible that. They'll knock us for six completely. We'll have to go back to the drawing board for a bit. But tactically, what I'm planning on doing is every five to ten games, trying to check not just the stats, but where the assists are coming from, where the key chances are coming from, looking at the kind of stats analysis pack. I also want to try and keep a running analysis of the XG, the expected goals, so then I can work out what's going on. Tactically, when I make a change, is it going to improve the team? So that can be part of the kind of by the numbers. We have to wait until we're a few more games into the season. So there's our hair, our hair, good ball over the top, and Hughes just carries it on, going further and further. It's a good long ball to somebody else in a different stadium somewhere. One of the things that's been pointed out on some of the forums at the moment is that long shots are quite powerful. You see quite a lot of them. I've only played the three friendlies here and I paid another friendly in a different save and I have to admit I've seen more long sort of goals from distance than I'd expect but not a huge amount. Duff brings it down, over it goes. Uh, some people have also said in the forums that the one-on-one -on -one finishing seems to be pretty bad uh, but to be honest I've not really noticed just because my team are really bad so I don't know whether that's just accurate or or not so I'm going to keep Manoa's out of that one. That's a good long ball through for Beta, appropriately, but he had no support. It ran him down. It's one of the avenues. Duff from free kick. Lynch offside. I'm glad he was there to try and follow it up, but offside. We've not set up our attacking free kicks just because I want to save that for a little bit later on when we know our team's a bit more settled. 
corners and long throws are a bit easier because the principle's the same no matter what the play is, really. Hughes gets past him there. Back to our hero. Our hero. I need to give him a nickname. Lynch to Hines. A little bit of short passing. It's not quite worked out, but we're keeping the ball. Lynch goes long. This is proper lower league football, isn't it? Just backwards and forwards. Ooh, nice. A few little short passes there. Long in. That almost worked. That almost got through. Admittedly, it almost just bounced through, but... Hughes, lining up a shot, another block shot, Hines again, Hughes another attempt, saved. I think we're starting to, I don't want to say dominate because that's a bit optimistic, but Warwick. See the pitch is starting to get dug up a little bit from playing. We are at home, so hopefully it doesn't get too dug up. Well saved by Gibbons, free kick straight down the line there. I mean, that's not what I told you to do, Gibbons, but fine. Lamb almost managed to get through, take advantage of that. Oh, it's coming through again. Almost for them. I think that's the best they've managed all match. So you've got six shots to their seven. Possession's about even. I think we're looking a little bit better, to be honest. What are you going to say to them? Assertive, we can get a goal. They don't care yet, that's fine. Um, anyone I'm going to move in? Duff's quite young. So I'm going to bring on Arbuthnot, because he's slightly older. Oh, he's, he's a few years older than he's about five. Um, because he seems to move quite well, and I don't want to burn Duff out just yet. Partly because that Choose Your Own Adventure advert they did for Football Manager before they dropped the beta has left me paranoid, because I gave the youth prospect in one of the options too much game time, and he just collapsed, and then I got sacked. Lamb, or cross the face of goal. Lamming again on the call. We're not very clinical, are we? I mean, we are a newly promoted side in the third tier in Northern Ireland, so I guess that's expect to be expected. But it's promising. We've seen a few long balls, a few cross-field balls. We've passed it short quite a lot. More so than I'd want, but... Oh, saved. McCready almost got through there. McCready's actually a player I tried to buy, and I spotted what I think's a bug, which I've reported, in that when it got to the kind of promises, he wanted to be vice-captain. Get it out. One of you. There we go. He wanted to be vice-captain. I wanted, I said, remove and exclude from the negotiations, and then it just appeared back straight away, no matter what I did, and then by doing it over and over again, I just made him angry. Let's bring on Mark Mitchell. From Noel McManus on the right, fresh legs. That's everything, really, isn't it? That's everyone we can bring on. See, so yeah, I just irritated him because they seem to be bugged. If you remove and exclude, and they really want that, then they should just stop negotiating with you. It, sh it shouldn't just appear again. It should just stop. You should be both too angry to carry on. Oh, that was terrible. How did he get through? Bit irritating that Nick Beta scored the first goal of the season against me. Also, this Niall Henderson is the player I released because he wanted two hundred and twenty pounds per appearance. I was poor defending. Now he's on side. There's just three of them. Well, bit of a gut punch to lose to that, considering how we were playing. Maybe one one ball in. Mitchell, Mullahan, Warwick, in it goes. There you go, McManus. The sub. I think he's about 17 years old as well. Can't remember where he was when I showed you. But just knocked it along. Went back wide. And flirted that one in. I guess it's flirted. McManus is there. That'll do us. That's a little bit fairer. Extra time to look forward to now. Be passionate. Dig in, everyone. They love that. 
I've not got any skins or um, graphics packs on or anything like that, just because I want to make sure if there are any errors with the interface that I can tell it's because it's the game rather than a pack that's been put in. Because it is the beta still. Still need to be able to pick up on these things. And I imagine once the beta's done, then I'll put all the packs and things like that in. But until then, just keeping it as it is. 17 to their 12 shots. It's that little back heel there. Aoi. I'm going to just call him Aoi. McManus stops it, brings it back in. Hughes. Lovely move, yeah. It's kind of what we want, just crosses. We're not going for full-on wing play. Oh, good save by Gibbons getting across there. Yeah, we're not going for full-on wing play and just doing nothing but crosses. But crosses are a part of a direct route. It's just you go direct down the channels and then... Or down the flanks, I should say, and then pop it in. That's what we're going for. Oh, Henderson. Henderson is the one we got rid of. We actually signed him. Played him in a few games. Oh, that came out of nowhere. Arbuthnot. Oh, back post. Almost. So yeah, we played a few games with Niall in. And then we just had to... When I, I saw that I was over the wage limit because of him. I just thought, I've got to get rid of him. I can't. As good as he is. I can't justify him. One free kick in. Back. Oh, Mitchell just needed to control it. He could have rifled that one in. Oh, Hines. I think we deserved it. If one team's got to win, it should be us. We've been better than them. It's not just in the match stats. It's in the kind of the type of chances we've had. They've had two good chances. we we'll scored their one. We've had a fair few more than that. Also loving the fact we've got 28 fouls. Getting stuck in. It's going to be penalties. I hope it's not got the bug that some of the other games did where the penalty's gone forever. <laughs> Hughes misses the first penalty. Well done, Hughes. Henderson. He's going to score, isn't he? Oh, saved. Gibbons. Doing the funky Gibbons. Arbuthnot. There we go. Almost finally scored a penalty. Beta. Gonna take it down the middle. Normally I look away when there's a penalty uh, shoot out on in, in FM, but because obviously I'm recording it, it'd just be silent whilst I was doing that. Oh Mitchell. I think they may have won it on the penalties now. Yep, Duggan. Need to score the next one. Keep us in it. Hines sneaks it in. Could do with a save. Take a bit of the pressure off. McCready is another player we tried to sign, uh, but again, the vice captain thing popped up. Saved by Gibbons. Pretty sure your Gibbons was off his line, but I'm not going to tell anyone about that. Manus, come on. Oh, McManus, no. A lot of save penalties. This is just one penalty contest. I don't know if this is a bug in terms of, you know, how many penalties are saved, but Murty. Oh, he scores and they're through. Saying, invade the pitch. A penalty shootout win over Belfast Celtic, whatever. Look at that. Ronnie Hot Dog's first competitive match in charge has not worked out, but that was a tough match. We were unlucky. Um... And that's one cup we're done and out of, one they wanted to be competitive in. Um, apparently no complaints. What, what's going on competition-wise? They don't care yet. They're not bothered by that. There's a team, every, every team's better than this. I think uh, competitive just means not getting absolutely tanned in everyone. There we go. So what I'll do is I'll play the next lot of friendlies, probably come back for the first match of the season, and then after that first match of the season, what we'll probably do is start looking at the tactic and analyzing it and by that i mean by going to the kind of stats and match pack at the end uh, but thanks very much for watching i'll see you in the next episode